Hello there, this is Danilo from Two Chefs, and in this video we're going to have a walk through the Kiko Cold so you can understand a little bit how it works and uh, how you can extend it and uh, you know create new operators and so on. Uh, I'm going to show you the code uh, uh, with the, my PyCharm. So here we have um, uh, the Kiko project, and as you can see, we have four different folders. The first one is the unit test, uh, we use nodes for running the unit test, we have a test for uh, Maya, Nuke, and some standalone tests. Uh, of course, you're very welcome to create more and you know create unit tests for your uh, for a new DCC app if you're planning to support it. Uh, in the extras folders, we have uh, some useful scripts like uh, you know for instance here we have uh, uh, the Maya Chef button codes uh, code so for export uh, for the exported dialog and the importer dialog. Um, then we have the plugins folder which contains of course plugins. Here we just at the moment we have just a uh, my plugin which is the Kiko undoer which handles the, the undo so whenever you're importing an animation you press ctrl z and you undo this is the command that gets run for uh, for the undo um, and then of course we have the python folder which contains uh, uh, most of the code um, and basically yeah basically all the code in here and, and so on the importing and exporting and so on so the first thing that we need to know is how Kiko serializes and deserializes data when you export or import files. Um, so basically Kiko converts uh, the data in the files into entities uh, that are uh, defined in the here in core entity. And we have these three different entities. So we have items, chunks, and channels. So item, if we, if we look through here, we see we have a base item that gets inherited by um, a root item and uh, an item. Basically these two here will uh, um, we have always a root item for each file, and then uh, of course we have uh, any number of items uh, and you can have uh, hierarchies of items so there can be just a flat list under the root. Uh, the, um, each item then will have channels and the channels, the channels basically have um, chunks uh, that will contain data for each operator. Um, and uh, same thing for items, so even for items you have chunks and uh, you can have uh, uh, chunk basically data that has been exported operators. The operators are basically what uh, creates uh, reads or your uh, um, Maya or a nuke file and then uh, exports data that is basically then uh, stored inside the Kiko files. Uh, for operators we have uh, at the moment curve operator, bake operator, static operator and so on. And we're gonna talk about them in a second. So you don't really need to uh, basically go and change this code because this one is uh, like I haven't changed it in a long time. It's more for uh, you know like uh, just telling you how Kiko works. Then uh, of course here we have some handlers which is uh, we use them for you know extending each one of these um, classes for you know handling chunks, uh, channels, and uh, you know and also mapping. Um, then we have the manager. The manager is uh, uh, basically this is the base class. Uh, and uh, for each one of the um, uh, DCC, uh, you will have to, you know, um, inherit this class or anyway use this class and pass in the facade for uh, that DCC. Uh, so for um, each uh, DCC, like uh, Maya and uh, Nuke, we have a facade that inherits from the base facade, which is uh, under apps base facade. We're gonna look at that in just a second. I don't wanna go all over the places just now. So basically for the, the Kiko manager, um, so you pass the facade, this is basically the first argument, the only argument that you need to pass. And then you have some fu uh, functions, so the export to file, of course, exports uh, exports to file, to a file, import from file, so we import uh, into the scene from a file, and then you have the uh, get root from file, so from by passing a file, you can uh, basically get the, um, the, um, the actual internal structure of Kiko, so this will return you you know, a, uh, an item, so the root item, and then you can, uh, you know, if you, if you want to debug uh, what's going on, you can always go in there and, you know, um, get the children from the root, uh, and then, uh, you know, get the, uh, you know, the channels and the, the chunk and the, data, the operator data and so on. Um, so, yeah, basically, uh, then you have uh, in each one of these, uh, um, each one of these method, uh, you have a bunch of uh, um, arguments uh, which are pretty self-explanatory, but of course we have comments here as well. And uh, feel free to you know write to us an email if in case you don't understand uh, what they're doing. Um, 
but yeah anyway this this out works uh, there are also some examples uh, on the wiki so if you go on the wiki uh, we have my examples nuke examples and this of course is just for programmers but again like this uh, gonna be pretty useful and also if you want to know more about uh, you know if you want to have more examples you can always go in the unit test uh, units Maya uh, test Maya and here you have uh, a bunch of examples so how you can uh, use hierarchy uh, how you can uh, you know map objects and so on so okay so this is the manager uh, and now let me go and see the facade let's have a look first at the facades and uh, uh, what's basically stored in the apps folder so in here um, there's basically the code that is is um, used by uh, each DCC so it's important to know that in Kiko uh, basically there's no um, apart from the Maya folder there's no code that is relevant to Maya and the same thing is Nuke so out here in the core folder IO operators and so on you must never um, like do an import Maya or uh, an import Nuke and this is because we, we try to keep these um, code independent and then in just in here we have the the code that basically is getting the data from Maya and setting the data to Maya so we have some uh, we have the UI so the exporter the importer um, then we have uh, the um, constants so some constants for mapping values from the from Maya to the Kiko standard names and values um, then the manager, uh, of course, is uh, as I said before, the manager we are passing, we're just inheriting the Kiko manager and passing the Maya facade. Uh, some preferences, so you can uh, change this, this is a singleton, so you can change just the, uh, pre the static um, um, values for uh, these, um, um, for its members, basically. Uh, this one, I don't really don't. Yeah, you shouldn't care about this one. It's just this works in con in uh, conjunction with the key conduer, um, and then we have the uh, Maya facade, which is basically what does basically it's uh, all where uh, almost the all the code for Maya is. So uh, in here, if we uh, let's see, so yeah, so Maya facade here it is. It's inheriting from the base facade, and if uh, you go in the base facade, you'll find the comments for all the methods. And all of these methods, they basically they, they have to be implemented in order to support the operators that are already in there, and they are of course for Maya. Um, so basically, the uh, get up name this will just return Maya in case of Maya and Nuke in case of Nuke. Selection will return the selection. Uh, these basically these these functions here for um, supporting you know um, image generation with play plus, uh, get node by name. I mean there's pretty self-explanatory and if you look at the Maya code you'll, uh, you'll really see what, the, what they're doing. They're very short functions that just uh, uh, have the responsibility for uh, getting some data or setting some data in a very straightforward manner. Uh, and the same thing for, uh, for Nuke. So in the Nuke facade you'll find the same methods. Uh, you know, get channels, uh, just get the channels and so on. One important thing to know is uh, uh, basically the conventions that we have for arguments. So uh, if I go back to the facade, and let's see. So whenever you see node obj, this is uh, the node uh, internal object for, uh, uh, for Maya, and this would be an M object. Whenever you see instead the node name is actually a string, uh, and this is just a convention so that basically you know already what you're getting uh, into the function. Um, channel object we should have somewhere so let's see channel, channel object is an M plug and then we have the K underscore channel object somewhere where is it this one where basically this one is actually an um, MFN an in curve um, and basically it's important to know what these uh, um, these arguments are just because uh, depending on what they are you will need to you know uh, perform some actions inside the inside this um, um, uh, this function so uh, if you know what your object object you're dealing with of course it's uh, it's of course easier to to know what you need to do um, so basically yeah, this is how it is for uh, Maya you will also find somewhere here uh, 
the code that is actually you know creating those ML objects uh, and uh, you know the creating those ML and curves objects and so on. Uh, for Nuke, instead, we're using a similar approach. So we have, I think, it, they're just the Nuke nodes. Um, while the channel object instead is a combination of is a tuple uh, that contains both the knob and the index, because of course you know you can have uh, index knobs. Uh, for instance, if you have an X Y Z knob, of course the the, the knobs uh, you, you will get basically three knobs, but the knob is the same with just a, a different index. So. Um, uh, yeah, so basically this is how it works and pretty much similar to Maya, uh, you can have a look at the, the code and so on. There are some things that are quite particular for Nuke, uh, if you go through the code, uh, like for instance uh, the post import key from channel object function, where uh, basically we have to handle the uh, tangents uh, after, uh, um, setting the, after setting them. Um, yeah, basically if, you want, if you're brave enough and you want to look at this code, you can, but anyway, it uh, doesn't really it doesn't really matter as long as it works really so um, it, yeah so yeah this is the app stuff uh, and then now we can talk about operators so operators are uh, as I said already what uh, let you export and import data from inside Maya so or uh, nuke or whatever this is in we have a base operator class and uh, for each base operator uh, you have uh, to provide some uh, um, methods um, so these two members have always to be uh, redefined for each uh, um, subclass. So uh, yeah, you'll see for each one of these uh, operators that we have those two members on top at the top. Uh, then we have, of course, you you can provide the name and you can provide you can say if it's a channel operator and so on. I'm, I'm gonna explain to you in a second what that is. Um, and yeah, I, I mean we have a bunch of methods here. Um, and then for each operator you can also provide the loaders so usually of course you have to provide at least at least one loader and uh, uh, but of course as soon as you you know change your operator and uh, you're returning different data uh, and you don't want really to uh, create a lot of uh, um, uh, you know if statements or anyway to support uh, all the different uh, uh, data formats that you used in the different operator versions uh, you can just create a new loader and uh, for you know that spe specific version and uh, that will handle uh, your new your new data format basically um, uh, and for the operator again we you just return the version which is just an integer and you have this load data which is uh, which basically takes care of um, uh, you know loading the the data that you are passing uh, that you generated previously from for, from the operator whenever you were saving the the Kiko file uh, as you can see here, we have a, a facade argument. This is actually going to be the facade for the BCC. So in case of Maya, you're going to have Maya. In case of Nuke, you're going to have Nuke and so on. It is possible that if you're planning to do another operator, the facade basically um, uh, is still not supporting uh, uh, the um, functions that you need. You can, but you can go in the facades and you know add them and uh, make sure that you know uh, your operator can actually do what, uh, what you want to do. Um, one thing that uh, is quite important is uh, whenever you create a new operator, make sure to uh, provide, uh, um, you know, to say if uh, the app that uh, uh, is using the, um, the operator is supported. So for instance, here, the app name is going to be passed and you can return true or false depending on uh, if you're supporting that app. So this will be the, you know, can be Maya or Nuke and you can say, I don't support Nuke, I don't support Maya or I support both of them and so on. Okay, so going back to the methods, we have uh, this is channel operator. So uh, as we said already, the both channel and items can have uh, um, uh, operators, so chunks, and then basically the chunk is just a container for the operator data. Um, so for the uh, so if you say this is a channel operator, it means that the data that is created by this channel, sorry, by this operator is just uh, is just. Um, um, is stored into a channel and also this operator can only work on channels uh, otherwise if you just return false it will just be an item operator uh, because operators are, and chunks are stored uh, into the um, into the Kiko file so for each item and channel in order uh, the um, basically when you load them uh, the um, this method will basically uh, be called so uh, if this returns for uh, true and the first operator that's going to be picked in order um, can say don't actually load the, the, all the operators that are after me 
and uh, you can do it by just returning true here. Um, version is the operator version, uh, and usually you shouldn't touch this uh, method just because the this returns the max loader version, so the latest uh, loader version that you um, registered for this operator. You can validate. So with this method, you can actually you can say to Kiko. Um, for this uh, node or channel, really depending if it's a channel operator or an iter operator, I can export data. So for instance, for the bake operator, the bake operator only exports data whenever uh, the, um, uh, the, the channel has an, inc an input connection. Um, but if there is the force, um, basically the argument is true, you should always, uh, you should always uh, um, return to, to from the validate method. So if you for instance, see the, the static operator, you see that we have a force um, or, uh, you know, and not uh, the channel is not connected basically. So, um, but anyway, you see if force is true, basically this is gonna return true. Then of course it's up support, we already said that, register loader, you shouldn't touch this one. This realizes for creating the data from uh, um, the, the um, the uh, sorry for loading the data, but this is just calling the loader, so you shouldn't touch this function as well. Uh, bakeable is uh, basically says if this is a bakeable operator. So for instance, for the bake operator and the word space operator, they are um, they are bakeable means that uh, basically my or nuke they will go through the, the timeline when they are exporting when Kiko is exporting, and for each frame they will uh, uh, they will uh, um, serialize some data and return it. Uh, so we create some data and return it. So um, we're gonna have a look at that, uh, like some examples in a second. Uh, the, the only difference that you need to know is that uh, while for the, for instance the curve operator and the static operator, you actually return all the data in one go. So all the data for the curve or all the data for the channel in one go. For the for the when uh, an attribute is bakeable, uh, sorry, when an operator is bakeable, the run uh, method will just uh, um, return the data for that specific frame. And then Kiko will take care of actually um, serializing it so that basically it's in a list and uh, you can it can it can be passed um, it can be passed later to the to the um, to the to the operator in a list basically uh, and get frame range is basically returns the frame range for the for the for the data that is being uh, um, saved by this operator so for a curve it could be uh, actually the, the the range of the curve, so the time, the frame range of the curve. So we have the first, the first frame at uh, frame um, at ten, and then the the last keyframes at frame hundred. The the frame range will be ten one hundred here. Um, and then the run function is the what actually creates the data uh, that uh, then gets stored into Kiko. So let's have a look at the static operator, which is the easiest one. Uh, we have the here down here you see we are registering the loader which is uh, being defined by in this folder here and it's pretty simple what we're doing so if uh, the data is valid uh, and the channel is not animated we just set the um, channel value through the facade otherwise we uh, try to make sure that the value is um, keyframed on, on a channel if there's already a keyframe um, then from uh, uh, let's see, so we are seeing static operator, so you see here we have ignore volume operators is true, uh, the validate method we already uh, discussed it, the static operator is uh, here uh, returning the stat static operator as name, uh, we're, we support all the apps, uh, is a channel operator of course it's true because it's just exporting a, ch a static value for, a, for an attribute, it's bakeable, it's not bakeable, uh, we don't have any frame range for a static uh, operator, and then here you see this is the data that we export from the from the um, from so for the static operator. And if you go in the loader, you will exp basically you, you can expect to get a similar structure. So you get a dictionary with a value key, and uh, you know a value uh, for the, for your uh, for your attribute. And you see here we have use value as well, and, and so. On. Uh, then we have, uh, let's have a look just quickly at the curve operator, which is going to be quite different. But so curve operator, this is the name, uh, validates if the channel is, uh, is animated. Um, then of course we don't, oh, like we always, in this case force doesn't really make sense because we want to make sure that the channel is animated because otherwise you can't really export any um, animation data. Uh, ignore following operators true. 
uh, bakeable of course is false uh, the frame range here is uh, we get the frame range for a channel and then uh, here is basically here we define the the data and uh, we return it in a in a dictionary and again we we are defining a loader and then the loader will get this data when it, when it loads just have a look at a quick uh, um, bake operator uh, so here the bake operator um, so the as you see here when you run we just uh, say the time and the value so here we don't actually bake the entire frame range it's just a value for one uh, for one frame yeah so basically here we, uh, we basically we have some logic here for uh, making sure that uh, we're returning the GUI range the GUI range in case there's no uh, valid uh, uh, I am frame range for a curve that is connected to the to the to the channel um, but of course like if this was constrained uh, this would actually return the big data for the constrained channel um, cool so here then we have the UIs and I'm not gonna spend much time here it's just very simple stuff so you can actually have a look uh, if you if you want and we have the utils folder uh, again this is pretty simple stuff you can have a look at if you want but you know we have very simple functions for you know getting the host and you know comparing comparing values and so on um, then here we have uh, the constants file uh, we have uh, uh, like some key co constants that then are used in the for each app as well uh, basically where uh, we map uh, uh, some uh, you know the key co um, you know tangent types to the specific Maya tangent types and, and so on so and finally the last bit is the IO folder so here we have the both the Kiko file and uh, uh, so basically this is uh, uh, what basically stores the convert like reads and write to the to the disk actually your your Kiko file uh, we have the serializer and um, basically the base the serializer so uh, and uh, of course so each ser the serializer because Basically, for the deserializer, of course, uh, and the data the data structure of uh, Kiko might change in the future, so we might uh, need to change version. Uh, but in that case, we don't really want to break any of the um, any of the basically the the, the files that you have are like are gonna be exporting uh, before we we change version. So um, the deserializer loaders are just you know making sure that the, the uh, the, the data that is stored in a Kiko file for that specific version can be uh, can be loaded at, at any time. Uh, the the code here is is uh, yeah it's kind of uh, uh, I mean it's simple but it's also I mean I'm, I'm not gonna go into detail to the, like at the moment but anyway if you want to have a look or you want to have a chat just uh, feel free to send us an email and uh, yeah I think like this is all for uh, for now and thanks very much for watching.